This is a lathe spider that I made. It's what I call a spider. I don't know if it's the real name of it or not, but um, it's used in the jaws of a three jaw chuck of a lathe in order to give you, um, it goes back up against the uh, chuck and kind of fills in some space so that then you can chuck in just a really small piece of metal uh, into the lathe and it won't get pushed back into the jaws. Um, and it's used like uh, this picture right here. Okay, now this one I made in a previous video. Um, I welded it up and then I milled it flat on both sides. Uh, and and it, it works great. Uh, it gives me about a quarter of an inch sticking out of still of the jaws. Uh, but it would be nice to have maybe a couple more that give me a little bit more depth um, and maybe even just a little less uh, maybe even a little taller spider too so I made up this pattern right here and I'm going to uh, pour two or three of these in aluminum and then you know aluminum uh, machines really easily and then I can just have these uh, kind of laying around and when I need one I can quickly mill it off to the height that I need and then uh, get it poured so this video is, is how to make this pattern right here. All right, we're gonna cut a taper on this uh, dowel and I've got the compound set at about three degrees and I got a piece of newspaper in there to try, hopefully catch most of this sawdust, we'll see. All right, here we go. We'll reset this tool post. out of this piece of wood right here and of course we have to have draft on these so I'm going to use this lighter gauge to get our draft set I'm going to do about probably three degrees All right that's got three degrees Let's see, I want this to be a little over an inch and a half, but I don't want it to come all the way through. Because I want this to hold together. Oh, that's just barely going to hold together. Let's try that. Okay, that'll work. And I'm going to kind of sight down this board and see where. All right, that ought to do it. Half. Look at 
this off. If I break that wedge off and stick it in there, yeah, I think that'll help me keep it flatter. All right, here we go. Okay, first I want to get my blade put back to zero. Okay, there's zero. And here we go. Veins are probably a little thicker than what I was thinking about doing, but I don't think I care. All right, I'll cut this piece that we just made off, and I want to turn the saw about three degrees off so that when I go to join this to the tapered piece that we did, it will match that taper. And then I also need pattern draft on the other end. So, I need, let's see, this is the top. So, I need the long end of the, of the be at the top. So, it's like this. So, we can do it like that. Let's see, that matches up. Can you see that? Yeah, let me zoom in just a little bit. So you can see that it matches up pretty much to that. Okay, and then I want this to be three inches long. So we're gonna go three inches. Three inches long, and now it's gotta be pattern draft. So I need this angle to go like this roughly which means I need it to be cut like this no that's the opposite I need it to be cut I always get mixed up on angles yes like this okay so we put this right here we gotta have that. Alright, so yeah, our pattern angle. Our pattern angle is right on this side right here. And then that will join up to that side like that. Okay, so I need two more. I'll get those done. Okay, there's probably better ways to do this, but this is the only way that I can think of. So um I need, I'm going to make a pattern, I'm going to draw it out on this uh, piece of paper so that then I can set my pieces on here and get them lined up. They don't have to be perfect, but I want those three arms to be, you know, close to 120 degrees. Because that's, you know, three of them, 360 divided by three is 120 degrees. So, I'm going to just start by drawing a line like that. And now, we're going to say make our center somewhere like that. And let's see here. I gotta come 120 degrees off. Well, I'm gonna have to do that so I can draw the line. 120 degrees. But that's still right. I tell you what, I'll do it this way. It didn't look like it was lined up. Okay, so I'll make a mark out here. And then draw that. Okay, so then another 120 degrees this way. Let's see. Like 
there. All right, so the test is, let's see if this is 120 degrees. It is. Okay, so we're at 120 degrees all the way around. All right, so now this is going to sit right in the middle. Something like that. Let's get a get a compass. And we need a ruler. I guess we can use this some crappy little one right here. Okay, and so that is doo -doo -doo, just shy of one inch. So set our caliper. I mean our uh, divide. What is this thing? This compass. We're gonna set it to be right at one half of an inch. We want it just a little bit over so we can see it. Okay, and we're going to make a circle. Well, kind of lost part of our circle. Okay, that's probably still close enough. And that helps us get that centered. Now, we've got to get these put in there. And the only the way to get them the closest to correct would be tape measure. Okay, so these are hmm, they are one. They're five eighths. Five eighths is ten sixteenths. So five sixteenths would be half of that. Okay, so all I know to do is we're gonna go, we're gonna go five sixteenths off of here. So that's four five sixteenths and five sixteenths and then four five sixteenths. Sixteenths. Well, okay, draw that line. Draw that line. And then we should be able to set that between those two lines like that and get it straight. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Do two more. That's our really rough sketch right there. Get my draft angles correct. Okay. All right, so we're going to glue it up just like that. All right, here we go. Tell you what, I'm going to put it on a piece of wood because once I get it glued up, I want to be able to move it. All right, I got a board. Get our glue. Stand that in the middle. Put a good wad on here. Good wad of glue on. Well, it helps when you open the glue. It goes faster. Alright, kind of stick that for a second. The same more glue on there. Alright, now when I cut my dowel off, I didn't get the bottom quite flat. So, I'm using these using this wood to stand it up straight. So I gotta push in on it a little bit. And this one doesn't look 
I don't quite the bottom's flat. I guess maybe it is. Okay, I think that's pretty good. All right, we're gonna let that dry. Then we'll come back and we'll put fillets in all these corners. Okay, before I set this thing aside to dry, I got my square out and put it up against them. Because this one did look like one side was straight up and the other one had quite a bit of draft to it. And I checked it and it, that's what, that was exactly the deal. So what I did, I tore a little piece of this sandpaper off and I shoved it underneath this side and underneath this side. And that gave me, tilted it over enough that I'm going to get enough draft on both sides. Okay, now we're going to let this dry. Once again, I lost some more video. So, uh, once the pattern dried, I came back, I used some of the Durham's water putty that you've seen in some of my other videos to uh, make some fillets on the sides of this. I sanded the bottom of it flat by just running it on a piece of sandpaper on a flat surface. Got it nice and flat across the bottom. And then sanded it all over, primed it, then sprayed it yellow, and it is now uh, ready to pour. So the next time I'm doing some uh, castings, I'll pour up a few of these and I'll have them available to use. Thank you for watching.